up guys? Um, I had a special request from someone called Engine. He messaged me on my comment section, sent me um, the request. Um, so what he wanted to do is create a 3D version of this, What's on what you can see on the screen now. It's a, a beam, a variable beam with various different profiles. So it has this long section that gets thicker and then it has the transition from this shape to to this shape. I'm going to show you the AutoCAD file. Oh crap, hold on. Um, so basically he his request was that... Oh dear. Hold on a sec. Let me locate this. New folder, new folder, original. There you go. Um, all I got was this diagram here and this diagram here, or these sections. So this is a section over of this area and this is a section over here. Now, the reason I know that is because these had dimensions on them and even if they didn't, the num like I can measure them. And the height of this was 42, which meant that the height over here is 42. Sorry. Because the height over here is 42, it means that that section represents this area and this area here where the crosshairs are. So these two would have the same section. Um, I'm going to copy them now to show you. So we got that section there and that section there. Now over here, we have a longer version of this exact section. So the cross section here will look like that, but it's a bit taller and I measured it out to be about 59.9, so round it up to 60. So what you would do is you would stretch this higher, yeah? Explode. And then I'll move these, ah, whatever, I, I, I don't, I'm not, you don't need to see that. Uh, just know that the, this, whoops, this area here, these elements here, they stay the same and we just stretch it up in this this particular area, yeah? Then that transitions to this area here. That's the next change of cross section where we look at this particular shape. Now, before I get into that, I want you to know that this cross section based on the dimensions I was given Oops. represents this area here, the very center. And this gets progressively smaller with the same section at this point, yeah? So going from left to right, this section a shorter version of this section here is what we see in this cross section. And that's why we see these transitional elements. And if you look in the plan view, we see that it gets thinner there. Um, this is, I'm, I'm assuming, a cross section through like where this cross line is going across. Anyway, so I hope that explains it. Um, I did mention later in the video that you would get this um, breakdown of what the cross sections are. But just remember, over here, we have a longer version of this, and over here, we have a shorter version of this. But they're exactly the same in terms of their, the shape, like the, this top area here and this bottom area here are, are exactly the same dimension throughout, same here, yeah? Which is what these lines represent. So I hope that li that gives you a little guide on how you decipher this kind of stuff because the information you get in, in, in the industry is, is literally just that. It's as simple as that. Um, so the final product looks like this. So there you go. I didn't model it as a beam. You can tell whether it's a beam, but I didn't use the beam creation because it, it was too complicated. Uh, this is a nice, simple way. Um, so if I isolate this, you can see more of what I mean. Oh dear. I'm going to unjoin these for now. Don't worry about what I'm doing 
at this moment. This is just so I can explain better. If you already understand, then, then skip forward. Um, oh, everything's split. Hi, there you go. So we have this section, which is we're going to mainly use the sweep blend as well as the sweep or extrusion. But I used these two instead of the extrusion for the last bit. Um, so one cross section to another cross section. Type HR. And then, whoops, this is one particular shape. I'll just undrawing these. Oh dear. Yeah, I don't know what's going on there. Um, right, so now you can see a transition between the long version of that and the eye. Hence, we get that little effect. So when you look at it side on, you get the exact same kind of section look as that. Um, yeah, anyway, then final one. Well, there's another one, but this one's the last one you need to do some extra thinking on. You get the long section, the, the taller section, linking to the shorter section. And remember, we've got these cuts going as well. Um, yeah, then last one, we have this, this section. Well, it's just a straight extrusion of this shape. No transition, nothing. Um, and then in the end, we will join them all together to get one shape. Um, and that's how you get rid of the lines and things. And then you got this nice looking beam that you can now load into your project. So I hope that's a good explanation. Um, Let's get started. You'll notice that my clothes magically changed because I recorded this on two separate days. So uh, just remember to like, share and subscribe. So. Basically, um, let's get started. So I'll go to families under here. I'll say new. I'm going to create a metric generic model. You can choose a face-based one if you know what you're doing, but I'm going to make it nice and simple and metric generic model. Face-based isn't that much more complex, but um, the only real difference is that if it's face-based, then you'll have to pick one face that will always be aligned to a face in your project, which is good for putting it on the top of a column, so once the column changes, the whole thing moves up. That's why it's actually better to do that way, but to save confusion for some of you, I'm just going to do it this way. Um, it's not much difference. Now, what I need to do is import, insert the CAD file, import CAD, and I've saved it on my desktop, so it's nice and easy to find. It, they all come in pinned, so remember to unpin them, that's the way you move them, so move from the center point to the center point here, this will be my, I'll use this as my center point. Now, I've explained already in the beginning what we're going to do, what profile is going to go where. Um, the profiles that I was given were these ones. Uh, this is all I was given. This is my raw data. I've been told to make the 3D version of this from just this data here. This is all you need. So I'm going to move these here so you can learn something about what I'm doing. <laughs> As you can see, the height of this is 42. So I know that this height is 42. And then that same profile continues here, but gets taller. And then that profile merges into this profile. And this one is actually, if you look at the number here, it's 113.5, which is the center point, which means that that profile changes all the way down to get here where it gets shorter. So the shorter version, so over here, the sh tall version of this transitions to the short version of this, and then this transitions to short version, transitions to the long version. Now, um, 
that's what you've got to work out in your mind when you first get something like this. Uh, I've shown you an easier way of the easy way of looking at it before. Now, let's just get started. So I'll select this, say CS, type CS for create similar, pick lines, just 500. I need one reference plane here. You want it at each transition. So here, 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 and here. Well, each major transition. One, two, three, four. And one of them came over here. So, yeah. so now I'll type AL for align. Want this edge and this edge and align that edge. And we're not locking anything. Now I want to name these just so that they're easy. Oh, align. There's one missing. Yeah. So that edge. So although it's not a transition we have a change in rules. So this is gonna be a normal straight extrusion. And then from here to here, we're gonna have two different shapes. So the same shape here and here, which is why we have two govern to govern that rule, and then a separate one for the next one. So. Now we need to create profiles. I'm gonna create all the profiles at once nice and easy so i'll say no not open file new go down here family metric profile yeah metric profile so i will insert cad you can even oh you can't link cad in this import cad original it's just the name of the drawing Bring that down here. Um, select this, move it. We'll start with that one. Now, all you have to do is type li for line. Say pick lines. I'll press tab there to get that line. There, there, there. Go all the way around. Get each one. off just to check and that's fine so I'll delete delete that linked CAD and I'll save this and I'll give it a, an, an easy name to follow so the naming convention will be this we'll name this one number one this one number two three four and the center we'll call that one well we'll call it five so this one is the center one so we'll name it five and now immediately as soon as we've done that we'll save as family name it four because now it's going to get shorter from there to here the shape will stay the same in terms of its like shape that's just that the height will get shorter so i'll select those and i measured the difference to be 51.5 so i'll select those type mv for move down 51.5 it's 51.52 but I'm not going to go into that detail 51.5 is good save it now I'll immediately say save as family 3 now 3 is completely different to this so I'll delete that and insert the, the, the CAD again And in this one, I'm going to use this one. And remember that this is the short one. So we need to lengthen this to, to give it the, the right naming convention. So by that, what I mean is we're drawing this one. This profile here. And this one is actually this profile here. They're the same except this one is taller than this one 
that's all that's the only difference but the point is because we're copying this one we need to remember that and and, and lengthen it now you know we could actually do this we could just hit explode yeah there you go now all the lines are live and remember to delete these ones and they're all linked like that yeah that's fine nice easy way now remember we've got a length in the top so select those type mv it's 18 i i measured it i measured that the total height of that point to that point was 60 59.9 but round up to 60 and that's 18 more than the 42 on the end which is why it's going up 18 if you are curious save that now file save as family two and we'll move, select those and move them down 18 done save it now i'll close this i want to close everything except Set the reference level on the main thing. You can hit that. Now I will insert load family and I will load those are the ones I did earlier. All of these. So hold control two, three, four, five. You don't want to touch these other backup ones. That's what they Revit saves automatically as a backup. So they're in the project now. We can see them here. Families, profiles, done. Ah, before we continue, there's a very important step that we need to do that I actually forgot to do. I want to open. No, you know what? We'll continue. We'll continue this. I want you to see why. I want you to see the mistake that happens. So I'm going to create blend sweep sketch path there to there. Type AL here to here, lock. I like to place it outside and then lock. Lock accordingly so that I know it's all locked. Say so yes, done. And now I'll come to 3D mode. And there's our CAD drawing. Profile one, I want that to be number five because that's at the center, as we discussed. Profile two. And if, if, if profile one happens to be on this side, then remember you need to make that four and profile two would be five. Um, it's not a big deal if they're the other way around. But if you draw from left to right, I believe this side, the left will be profile one and the right will be profile two. And I'm gonna tick the box. I like this to be consistent colors. And that's that, done. Now we're about to see a problem come back to floor plans I'll do or floor plan level reference level uh, type um, what am I doing I'll create sweep blend sketch path there to there AL for align there to there and lock there to there and lock there to there and lock I don't know why I went all high pitched and ting <laughs> um, Select profile four, profile three. Oh, it worked. No, it didn't work. It kind of worked. It worked better than it worked before. I have no idea why. But you can see this is a problem because if I look at it from front view, that doesn't look like that. It should be coming in rather than going out and the problem is Revit doesn't know because I haven't told it so I've just made this one single line and this side so it just goes to one point which is that one the nearest point it takes that point there and it takes that point there and and that point there so what we need to do is we need to create one point here so that this line will go to that one and, and this one will have another thing. Well, they're both going to converge onto that point. So it goes in. Um, 
rather than going out that way. So to do that, I'm going to say open and I'm going to edit that one. So that one was number three, I think. So all I want to do is type SL for split here and here and copy this one. Select that and type CS for create similar and just offset 10 millimeters. Pick lines and that. The reason it's 10 millimeters is because I measured it earlier. Uh, this point to that point, not that one. This point is 10 millimeters. If you don't believe me. Oh, it's 15 millimeters. Okay, it might have to be that point because I remember that was the issue. Okay, let me let me work it out here in my mind. Yes, it would be this line. Well, for you, I can't really explain why. It's going to have to be trial and error. Uh, I think it just picks the best one because that side has gone to that that point. Either way, sometimes it doesn't even create anything, which is what happened earlier. Um, what did I do here? 10 millimeters. So I'm going to click this, that one, that one. And remember, I've already split the line. I can delete that reference line. Save, load into project and close overwrite existing version, and when you go to 3D, boom. That works, but it might not be right. So in this particular case, it's right. How do I know that? Because his AutoCAD drawing shows that's, yes, yes. So that's why it's that edge, because all of these edges, both of the edges are converging to the bottom edge. <clears throat> If it was, oh, I was going to point out the screen. <laughs> if, if this point was higher over there and this line went that way, then you'd pick the higher line. But you want them both to converge to the lower point. Um, if you don't understand what I've just said, just try it a few times, maybe change it up. And if it doesn't look right, then do it the other way. So try try 15 at first and you'll see that it will go that way and it won't look right then come change to 10 and then you'll see the right way you'll see that the correct way of showing it so next um create sweep blend sketch path a alpha align there to there and lock there to there and lock there to there and lock Boom. Now, here, that's profile three, yes. Profile two, we'll make that number two. Boom, great, fantastic. And there we go. Now, that is correct. That's how it's supposed to look. Now we've got one more left to do. Um, For this one, I don't need to do a sweep blend. I'm gonna just do a sweep because the profiles are the same. As you can see, the height doesn't change, the shape doesn't change. And it goes for a length of 75. Anyway, sorry, someone texted me. Um, So, sweep, sketch path, A alpha align, that edge to there and lock, that edge to there and lock, that one to that one, and lock, and say tick, and select path, and remember it was number two. So you can see that one there. So, fantastic.
that is one side done. Now, I want all of these reference planes to be copied and duplicated to the other side. Um, select these. So yeah, I, I would actually just type DM for mirror. And I would drag them off. The reason for that is now I'm going to edit them. Edit the path. Type AL for align. Because I, I want them aligned to these reference planes. Same here. Just double click the line. Um, and go from the left side first for this particular case, or should break the thing. Right, I'm gonna speed up the video and do the same thing for these. Okay, and there we go. Now, I would like to join these up. So hit join, there to there, there to there. And now they're all one piece. So, last thing. This is a basic thing, basic beam. Um, I also want to, I don't have to select them, select it, but I'll change it to a struct structural framing element. And um, I'll come to reference level and I'll do one last thing onto the model. I'm going to select these, well, I'm going to type LI for line and it's being drawn on the reference level. I'm gonna just draw from there to there. Type AL for align, edge to edge and lock, edge to edge and lock. Oh, I accidentally unlocked that. So that level to that level and lock. Very important to lock it. And I want that one to select the line. Make sure it's the line itself if selected. Yep, line. I want it. I want to change the visibility and I want to only have it visible in coarse mode. And as for this thing, I'm going to select all those, filter out. I only want the structural framing elements, the 3D elements. And I want to change the visibility and turn them off in coarse mode. And you can change the line itself to a thick line. Um, I don't have any thick lines loaded in. I don't really know much about lines, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> um, you can oh, delete this also. Make sure you delete that. And then you're basically done. But I did say, is this all joined? Yeah. Um, I'll select all of these elements, and I want them to, OK, I need to filter out the line. I want them to have a material, and it's already got structural material start uh, placed in there, but you can create a new one, name it the same thing if you like, but there you go, I'll, I'll put that one in, and I've just given it a uh, material parameter, I haven't actually given it a material, so now I'll come here, and I'll change the actual material assigned to that material parameter, I'll add a new one. How do you add a new material? Yeah, create new material. Well, I've duplicated one. Um, let's call it 
concrete. And then I'll go find concrete. Um, Precast. And I've given this the properties of that concrete. I'll change this to concrete. You don't really need to do this, this step, but I like to. And there you go. If I change it to realistic mode, oh, it looks like concrete. I'm going to change, I'm going to change that back to consistent colors. And then um, with, when you have a project open, you can just load into the project and close. As I mentioned earlier, probably, um, I'm going to make this a bit more advanced in the next stage. And that's where the reference plane usage will come in very handy. So if you're happy with just this, fine. If you want to make it more advanced, then by all means check out the next few videos if I've made them by this time I'll probably make them later um, but for now this is your variable concrete beam uh, remember to please like, share, subscribe and turn on your notification thing all of that stuff